It was the 19th of March, 1932, and one of the biggest crowds in Australia's history converged to watch the opening of the huge and expensive Sydney Harbour Bridge by the state premier, Jack Lang. The bridge had first been proposed in 1815, but even after all those years of waiting and planning, poor Jack missed the boat. Francis de Groot, one-time British Army Major, cut the ribbon in a bold, perfectly timed dash. He was later fined $18 for offensive behaviour. Premier Lang had to wait for the ribbon to be rejoined before he had his slice. Then, the crowd surged forward. During that first hour, 200,000 people crossed the bridge, a record that remains unbroken to this day. Nowadays, people don't walk over the bridge, they drive across, at much the same speed, and pay for the privilege. That's really money for jam. Faced with this problem, the planning authorities have come up with the Warringa Expressway, a $25 million shortcut to the tail end of the same old queue on the bridge. This time, Governor Sir Roden Cutler has the opening ceremony all to himself. Even though the expressway cost more to build than the bridge, it aroused relatively little interest. Most people were still trying to work out which lane took them where. Each year, more and bigger cars swell the ranks of the procession that daily snakes its way to and from the city at peak hours. Expressways certainly help after the bridge has been negotiated, but perish the thought, it appears the only real solution to Sydney's problem is another bridge.